Yo, what up homies, Yandereko GD here, and this is my spoiler-free review of the Separate Ways DLC and whether I believe it is worth $10. This DLC is overall solid, but there are a couple of gripes I have with it. I don't want to waste your time, so we're going to get right into it, but before that, I just want to ask that you like, comment, and subscribe. Alright, let's go. So just like I did for the main game review of the RE4 remake, I want to compare the Separate Ways DLC to how it was in the original game to see if it holds up. Since this is a spoiler free review it's a little bit hard, but what I can say is that the storyline and the gameplay of the DLC is vastly different than it was in the original game. It has more changes than the base game had to the 2005 base game, and what I mean by that is Leon's scenario. Some connections were completely cut and replaced, and I guess the main question in this case is if it was changed for the better. To be honest, I think it's much better story wise. It adds a lot more depth to Ada and other prominent characters to the story, and in terms of gameplay it's about what you would expect. It's different enough from Leon's gameplay to make it fun, but if you're expecting something revolutionary, then that's just not going to happen. Ada sacrifices some of Leon's all roundedness for more agility, and that's exactly what you would expect from Ada. Another big change to Ada's combat is her weapon selection. She has way more options as far as firepower goes, and she has more freedom on how to upgrade. Some weapons that couldn't be upgraded can be upgraded now, so that's a big step up. With all of this firepower, you would hope for a good variety of enemies to dispatch, right? Well, this DLC does a pretty good job of that as well. There is a good variety of enemies, and if I'm remembering correctly, there are more unique enemy types in this DLC than there were in the main game. The main critique I have about the DLC are some of the boss fights. None of the boss fights are bad, but there were one or two that just were not fun and kind of bored me. They don't have any fun gimmicks or attack patterns. It's just run away from the enemy in this small area, parry their attacks, and then shoot them. Rinse and repeat until they're dead. This is something that's kind of apparent in a lot of bosses, but the difference between the bosses in the main game and this DLC are that bosses that Leon fight have way more variety to them. Not all the bosses are bad however, the majority of the bosses are pretty good and do have good variety to them. There's even some that make you feel like you're playing an Attack on Titan episode, but I'll leave that there since I can't go into spoilers. Another good thing about this DLC is the level design. The way Ada traverses the map in comparison to Leon is what really breathes some fresh air into the DLC. Ada uses the grapple gun significantly more than she did in the original game, and it allows you to move around much more freely. This is the most satisfying thing in my opinion because even though you're exploring the same areas as you did with Leon, it doesn't feel old because they reuse these areas in a unique way. Something both the OG several ways in this remake do well though is the replay value. All Resident Evil games typically have really good replay value, and this DLC is no exception. There are challenges and unlockables that incentivize you to replay it a good amount of times over. You can unlock Leon's RPD outfit, Luis's vest, Ada's dress, Ada's RE2 remake outfit, the suit for Wesker, and there's also some other accessories you can get for Ada. And just like Leon, you can get the Chicago Typewriter Infinite Rocket Launcher. It's always a good time to blitz through the game and demolish everything after most likely struggling in a few areas the first time over. Now the worst part of this DLC by far is the voice acting. I want to preface this by saying I mean no disrespect to Ada or Wesker's voice talent because I can tell they did their best, but I really do not like the way they deliver their lines. It's extremely apparent when you compare Leon and Ada's VAs back to back, and while it was noticeable in the main game, since you're actually playing Ada in this DLC, it's even more noticeable. I'd be lying if I said some of the impact falls flat because of how little I enjoyed the voice acting, and I think that is a valid complaint to bring up front. Like I said in the main review, this does not give you an excuse to harass the VAs. Ada's voice actress expressed how excited she was to represent Ada, and I know for a fact she tried her best, but unfortunately I can't hide the fact that I didn't enjoy it very much, and the same goes for Wesker. So without going into spoilers, I believe that's all there's really important to know about the DLC. It has some flaws, but it has good strengths that overshadow it. If I had to give it a rating out of 10, I'm currently hovering over an 8.5. It offers a lot of interesting ideas to the narrative of the game, while also providing gameplay that cannot be found with Leon's scenario of the game. Besides the voice acting and the boss fights, it's basically perfect, so I'd say it's worth the $10, but if you aren't convinced, then I'd just wait for a sale. With all of this said, I want to wrap up the video by thanking all of you who made it to the end. If you wouldn't mind, can you please like, comment, and subscribe? Pretty, pretty please? Alright, I hope you all have a good day. My name is Yandere Gogeta, and I will see you next time. Peace.